last video of this chapter, and Miss Future will take over. Um, we are going to write polynomial functions, and I want to write the equation of this polynomial function given the y-intercept and three zeros, and I want to write it in standard form. So remember, standard form always of a cubic will look like this, y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, okay? And I'm going to put it into factored form, so I know that I have three zeros, negative four, positive one, positive three, okay? And then this y-intercept right here is the point zero, negative six. So this is my x and this is my y. And what I'm solving for is a. So I'm gonna put my x and my y in every place I can and solve. So my y equals a times x plus four x minus one and x minus three. So this is negative six equals a four times negative one times negative three. That's gonna be a positive 12, so I'm gonna divide by 12. So a equals negative one half. So the equation is y equals negative one half x plus 4, x minus 1, and x minus 3. And then I'm going to bring it down to standard by f multiplying out, by distributing everything. Okay, before you move on, I'm just going to change one quick thing. This right here should say and. Sorry. Okay, let's talk about the definition of finite differences first. It says when x values in a set are equally spaced, the differences in the y values are called finite differences. You might have seen this a little bit in Algebra 1. I know we teach it in our Algebra 1, but it just depends on where you took Algebra 1 and who taught it to you. So let's look to see what this means. You can see over here that my x values are definitely equally spaced by 1, so I'm now going to subtract 10 minus 6, 6 minus 2, 2 minus negative 2, and negative 2 minus negative 6. Notice these are all the same the first time I did it. Okay, now let's look at this next example. Negative 15 minus 9, sorry, negative 15 minus negative 9, negative 9 minus negative 7, negative 7 minus negative 9, mi negative 7 minus negative 9, and negative 9 minus negative 15. Okay, so those are finite at differences, but they're not the same. So let's look and see what happens in the next set. Negative 6 minus negative 2, negative 2 minus 2, and 2 minus 6. So they finally all match the second time. Finite differences tell us a lot about our function. If it works the first time, then what that tells us is that our function is linear. If it works the second time, it's telling us that our, form, that our function is quadratic. And I can now take two points off the linear and do slope, y, you know, point slope form, and I can take three points off quadratic 
and create a system and put it in my calculator and use a matrix. Okay, so in this example, uh, the first five triangular numbers are shown. A formula for the nth triangular number is the function that you see. Show that this function has constant second order differences, which means because this is a 2, this should be second order. So I'm just going to create a table real quick. My first pattern has one dot. My second pattern has three dots. My third pattern has six. My fourth pattern has ten. And my fifth pattern has fifteen. Okay, notice my x's are pretty consistent. Um, and now we're going to subtract. 1 minus 3 is t negative 2. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. 6 minus 10 is negative 4. 10 minus 15 is negative 5. Finite differences, but not the same. So it's not linear because it did not work the first time. Negative 2 minus negative 3. Negative 3 minus negative 4. Negative 4 minus negative 5. Notice these are all different the second time, which would mean it would be quadratic. So if I do find night differences and quadratics don't match, I match, I go again, and if they match the third time, it's going to be a cubic. And if I match a fourth time, it's going to be a quartic. And so on, and so on, and so on. This problem is the same as the one on the first page, except it's not in graphic form. So I'd like you to pause this and work this problem out and see how close you can get to the right answer. I'm assuming you'll get the whole thing right. Okay, so now here's the work. Solve for A, and then bring it over here and plug it in and multiply down to standard form. And the way to check this is you could put this in your calculator in Y1 and then check to make sure that your zeros and your y-intercept are right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the finite differences to see if this is linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, whatever it is. So we're going to start subtracting. This will give me negative 9. This will give me negative 13. This will give me negative 14. This will give me negative 12. And that will give me negative 7. So it's not linear. I'm going to subtract again. This actually gives me positive 4. That gives me 1. This gives me negative 2. And this gives me negative 5. So it's not quadratic. Let's try it one more time. That's 3. That's 3. That's 3. So this is a cubic. And the standard form of cubic is y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. I'm now going to create a system. If I have a cubic, it means I have to choose four points. So I'm going to use these four points. And I'm going to plug the x into all the x's and the y into the y. And I'm going to write four equations. So the first point is y equals a times x cubed, 1 cubed is 1, plus b times x squared, plus c times x, plus d. So I get a plus b plus c plus d equals 5. I'm going to do the next one now. I'm going to plug in the y equals a times 2 cubed, plus b times 2 squared, plus c times 2, 
plus D. So we get 8A plus 4B plus 2C plus D equals 14. I'm going to use the next point. So Y equals A times 3 cubed plus B times 3 squared plus C times 3 plus D. And last but not least, I'm going to put in 41 equals A times 4 cubed plus B times 4 squared plus C times 4 plus D. So you get 64A plus 16B plus 4C plus D equals, whoops, not 27, 41. Okay, I'm now going to create a matrix out of that. I'm going to do, so sorry, got interrupted. What we're going to do right now is we're going to create an augmented matrix. And unfortunately, I want it to be on the same page, so I'm going to create it right over here. And if you remember, my first A, B, C, D, then that And my constant I have A, B, C, D, and my constant. And I have A, B, C, D, and my constant. And A, B, C, D, and my constant. I'm going to put that into matrix as a 4 by 5. And I'm going to do RREF and get the augmented matrix, the identity, which would be one on the diagonals, zero here, and then my answers down the right hand column. We're going to get negative two thirds up here, we'll get six in the middle, we'll get negative 13 over three here, and four. So I will now write the equation of the polynomial, y equals negative two-thirds x cubed plus 6x squared minus 13 over 3x plus 4. So then I'm going to put this in y equals and check my points, and if I check my points, I notice that it doesn't work. So, I'm sure you all noticed and wanted to scream out at the video to stop me from making my mistake, but my mistake is right here in this. So, if I redo that, I will actually end up with... negative one-half plus five x squared minus five over two x plus three and that will be the correct answer. So this is not the correct answer. And we'll end on this note. Have a great weekend. And after Friday, we will have seven full days and three half days left. Countdown is continuing. Have a great weekend.